guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today is officially day number one of the um, van build, but actually won't be building anything. Rather, um, there were some issues um, that uh, I came across when I bought the van. So when we're talking about uh, mechanical issues, uh, nothing too serious I hope. Uh, I've done a bit of research and there's nothing serious, so I'll be attempting uh, the first fix for today. And that is uh, the most commonly, or one of the most common things that go wrong uh, with vans, or should I say the issues that come up, is the EGR valve, which is just over here. And I'll, I'll get you guys a close up shot of what I'll do. But um, this isn't really a tutorial on how to clean the EGR valve, uh, but just how someone like me, uh, who has never done any mechanical work on a car, um, how I go about just doing very simple jobs. Um, which um, you know gives you the knowledge and actually can make you very confident uh, in work on working on your own van. So uh, I'll get you a close up now, but before that, uh, let me show you how I came across this issue. Well, guys, so we're, we're in the van right now, and I just wanted to show you um, how I came across this EGI issue. So uh, to basically go through the story um, quickly, because I don't want to bore you guys. I bought the van and I was driving home and the um, drivetrain uh, warning light came on. I'll just pop up the symbol um, that I saw on the dashboard, excuse me. And um, so I started to do a bit of research uh, what this error means and it pointed to quite a few things and at first I was like, I hope the drivetrain hasn't gone completely. Um, I don't really know what a drivetrain is but just by doing a bit of research, it is a massive component uh, of any vehicle. And if it's something you need to uh, replace, I can only imagine that it costs a lot of money. Anyway, fast forward, um, I do my research. One of the things that it points to is the EGR valve, but there are many other things that you can do to kind of uh, potentially fix the problem. So I sit on it for about a week and then I jump in the van again. I wanna go and record a kind of introductory video for the YouTube channel just giving you guys a, a kind of a walkthrough of the van and what's what. And that message or that icon, the drivetrain icon disappears and the engine management light comes on. Uh, so I plug in this this tool here. This is an OBD2 scanner, um, really good tool, uh, very cheap. I think it was about, I think I mentioned it in the last video, but may, maybe around 27 quid or 21 pound from, off Amazon. And it will at least give you a basic error code readout which you can then you know just go into google and do your research and find out um what the error is all about so um i did clear the error um but let me see if it's in the stored error here and i can show you exactly uh what this tool showed me when i plugged it in all right guys um so i'm just under the uh cars um the um, the steering wheel uh near where the clutch brake and accelerator pedal is and there is an obd2 port and it's just to the left of the let me have a look where is it yeah so it's just kind of near the gear stick um, um so let me just show you what it looks like actually yep yeah. so there's your pedals and if you just look under here next to the gear stick just underneath there you have your port which looks like that so I'm just going to attempt to plug it in. There you go. All right, so here's the OBD2 scanner uh, plugged in. Um, it takes its power from, from the car, so you don't need any batteries or anything like that. But it's now telling me uh, to switch the ignition on and press any button. So remember, don't turn the car on, but just move it into the ignition on position. So all the lights on the dashboard and everything turn on. So there you go. That's ignition on. Now let me just press any key. So I'll just press enter, but you could press anything. So it's just um, linking up to the van, to the van's computer and just establishing a connection. Okay, great. So you can see here that it says codes found was zero. I've erased the codes already, but let me just see. Hopefully it has some store codes. So I'm just gonna go read codes. 
let's see. So we're going to go to stored. So no codes, okay. Pending code, let's have a look. No pending codes, all right. So um, my main goal here to for the EGR valve and to to do to get rid of that drivetrain or that um, engine management life uh, uh, en engine management light uh, error in regards to the EGR valve uh, is actually uh, we can do two things. Um, this is based on the research I did. Again, guys, I'm not a mechanic. Uh, I'm not saying that what I'm saying is 100% uh, correct, but uh, it's just based on the research I did. I'll pop. Uh, a bunch of videos that I watched uh, those are, are a lot more helpful and hope will hopefully um, help you understand how to deal with this just okay so what are the two things I'm going to do so the first thing is I'm going to dismantle uh, the EGR valve or the unit um, very simple uh, five bolts um, uh, take out the electrical connection and then you have um, the inside of the EGR valve actually exposed and you can go ahead and clean that with what I've uh, seen online with WD-40 so that's what I'll do so that's one thing you could do if you want to kind of um, be a bit of a mechanic you know double quotes of course and um, do it yourself thankfully on the 2007 uh, transit which I have the connect the valve is right at the top so it's such an easy job and it's well worth the effort but if it's not easily reachable, then the second thing you can do is get an EGR um, EGR valve uh, cleaner. Uh, so I think uh, wines or winds, if that's the correct way uh, you pronounce it. And you just spray that into the air intake. So that's the pipe that comes off um, your air box and goes into the depths of the, of the van. Um, I think it goes into the manifold. Uh, that's what I've read. I have no idea what a manifold is, but apparently that's where it goes. Um, and yeah, there's a technique uh, on how to spray that inside the air intake, which I'll show you when I get to it. But first of all, um, let me show you how I open up the EGR valve and um, let's clean it. Okay, so uh, here we are. Um, the bonnet is open and we're looking into the, the engine bay area. Um, so. The way to find the EGR valve on the 2007 Transit Connect is this unit right here. It's right on top, uh, really easy to get to. There's one bolt, uh, which is a bit problematic, but um, not really an issue that much. If you just put a little bit of effort in, you can get it out. Uh, so let me set you guys up over here on this little uh, flexible spider um, uh, tripod, and then uh, we'll get to it. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a total of five bolts. Uh, four of them hold on the two parts of the valve together. So that's one, two, three, uh, and there's a nasty one uh, just under under this spot over there. Uh, and then you've got one here, which uh, holds it on to whatever this is. Yeah, it's definitely part of the engine, but I don't know what, what this is called, but yeah, you undo this bolt here and you're good to go so uh i've got a ratchet which i just dropped something one second yep so i've got the ratchet i've got this uh, little extender so it's just the right way just put it in press this button there you go and then um here's one of the bolts i basically two days ago at night i couldn't just con i couldn't contain myself I was thinking about it too much so I just went and undid the bolts and I opened the EGR valve and I checked it um, so there's a couple of things uh, that I'll show you but here's a little connector piece here's a, a size T30 um, torque bit um, so so let's open it up Yeah, and then um, just uh, take this this bolt out over here, just connecting it to uh, to whatever this thing is. 
and um, if I'm not mistaken it's two sizes smaller so it's a T25 uh, torque bit um, torque bit yeah so you can just um, again just just break it because it'll be a bit tight and then just use your fingers to uh, gently uh, take it out so you don't mess the um, the threads up so let's just take this out now gently there you go uh, slowly take it out just put it to one side for now and uh, you've got this what can only assume is like a gasket um, so we'll keep this safe just just know which way I mean there's only one way it can go I, I assume and that's the way it came out so that's the way it'll go back in that's the gasket right there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this electrical connection off and it seems like just that little clip there is a flat head just to slightly pry it up and then the connection should come off so let me just go get the tools and then um, I'll show you that okay I finally figured it out I actually took it off um, so I put it back in just to show you guys how I'm gonna take it off again um, and this time I did a much better job so uh, all I did was I put nothing here I just put a flathead screwdriver and just lift it slightly up and then wiggle this time just wiggle it out of it there you go it's come off be ever so gentle very small wires and there you go it's off all right so here's the um here's the uh, one portion of the uh, the egr unit i'll call it the valve and um you're basically attached to the uh, other half of the uh, the EGR valve. So this one was attached to that to the van. Um, this these two bolts, these three bolts, actually very easy to get to. Um, this one was a pain, um, and here's where the electrical connection goes. So if we look at the inside of this portion of the valve, you can see this carbon deposits uh, build up, uh, but what sometimes happens is this thing here which opens and closes will actually get jammed uh, but this is looking really good um, thankfully nothing is broken and uh, there is if you can see just over there there's like a little uh, clip so when you are cleaning it just be careful that you don't um, you don't move that otherwise um, yeah I think it goes I can see a part of the of that uh, clip or pin um, inside there as well so we don't want to mess around with that too much but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some WD-40 on a microfiber cloth and just clean this as much as I can uh, and I'll use a, a dry brush like a dry, dry uh, paint brush just to first clean it uh, just get all this uh, deposit out as much as I can and then uh, I'll go around with the WD-40 sprayed onto this clean it out and then we'll do the same uh, on the other half of the EGR valve. This spray uh, uh, winds diesel EGR cleaner into the air intake, so that should help clean a lot of the stuff that you know I can't get to. So this is the uh, second part of the valve, and inside there is a is a lifting pin, if uh, if that's the correct terminology, which has two ball bearings on either side, and basically it rotates this way and down and up and down. It doesn't spin, but it rotates. Uh, now what I've seen happening and let me just see if I can get you guys a closer view without dropping the phone So this is the pin and You can 
see it. I, t I can turn it with my finger now. What happened the other day was just that pin over there, it was stuck in that position. And it's probably just due to the carbon buildup over time, it's got stuck. On some instances, um, they do snap, but thankfully uh, this hasn't snapped um, because getting hold of just that pin alone is quite tough. And um, I found one just about, so I'm gonna keep that as a backup. But what I'll do here is I will try and just clean all this area up as much as I can. And then, um, yeah, once that's done, we bolt it back together uh, and then we'll do part two uh, of the cleanup. Here's, here's a piece if you can see that a nice little chunky piece that was in there um, so this is why uh, I'm cleaning it so I can get it as clean as possible and then I'm hoping that the EGR valve um, cleaner when I put it into the intake which will be here um, that will take care of these small things and basically burn it off over time Here's the here's the kind of mechanism part. So we got to make sure that the um, that the um, that the pin is uh, as, as vertical, no, not vertical, horizontal, so that it can slot into these two straight in. Um, and that's the only way, and then we'll just basically push it back in. Put these bolts up, and this one as well. Plug the electrical uh, connection back in, and there's a little clip thing that comes here for one of the wire harnesses. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll turn the car on. We'll turn the van on. All right guys, so this is the, the air box which holds uh, the air filter but um, <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm actually right so I'm just going to undo these four bolts and then um, let's see what's what Okay. 
okay so with the um, uh, I've screwed on the, the air box I bolted it back on I just checked the air filter it's in okay condition but I'll definitely be replacing that so here's the air intake that comes out of the box and goes somewhere down there into something uh, but what I noticed is if you can see you most probably can is this thing here there's a there's a crack seems like the rubber has completely perished um, so yeah okay, it's a better view so I mean I did notice that when I was driving um, it felt like air was escaping from somewhere and I think that's the culprit right there so I think what I'll need to do is I'll need to replace this pipe uh, this whatever this is it seems like a hardened plastic or a hardened rubber um, I'll have to take this box out again so I can get space and then it shouldn't be too there's a jubilee clip over here there seems to be another one down there and hopefully that should um, take away that washing sound but let me get the car uh, up to temperature and let me spray um, the EGR cleaner into there so at least that can do its job and then that pipe um, uh, can always be replaced um, so let's get the car to temperature So this one actually I could take it off it's just this was a pain in the ass and I didn't want to uh, completely destroy it until I have the replacement part then I don't mind I thought of opening the box up uh, and let me zoom you guys out a bit no I can't do that I thought of opening up the box and then spraying it through here from the inside but this sensor is here and I don't want to screw anything up so then really the only option I had was this hole here this this crack it's the same same thing it's just basically cracked here um so what i'm gonna do is let me see if i can nope no uh, second i'm gonna do something uh like this and then i'm gonna spray uh and then i'll do it that way and let me show a hack there you go. This is the perfect position uh, to hold the engine at 1500 revs. So I'll be doing that. So let me get started with that.
guys so now with the um, EGL valve well, EGL valve um, spray sprayed in uh, the final step recommended is take it for a drive on the motorway and um, have bursts of like three three and a half thousand revs while you're driving and uh, there should be uh, black smoke coming out or there could be uh, and that's not such a bad thing that means it's just clearing everything out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down the dual carriageway first Okay, so um, I took it down the A4 uh, for a couple of miles, uh, drove about 25 minutes almost and made sure that the um, revs uh, went uh, 3000 and above. Um, so I kind of just like suddenly put my foot down on the accelerator so it's, the revs shoot up, but no black smoke. And um, so that could be a good sign that there actually wasn't too much of a build up of um, carbon clear out so that's, that's a good thing but I will try in the next couple of weeks uh, to drive it a longer distance and um, I'll keep you guys posted if, if I see any black smoke um, the most important thing is absolutely no um, uh, drivetrain warning lights no engine management lights so it seems like um, things are good and what we did today um, has fixed the issue so I think I'll leave it at that actually so take care thank you so much if you're watching this video welcome if you're new to the channel uh, please uh, hit the likes please subscribe um, to support the channel thank you so much guys take care bye